Hello! I hope everybody's doing well out there. What we're going to do here is talk quickly, a, a little brief intro to Chapter 7. We're going to talk about scatter plots and association. Um, and also this word called correlation, which is a measurement of strength. But we'll get to that in the next video. But right now we're going to talk about what this scatter plot thing is. A scatter plot just shows the relationship between two quantitative variables. Um, in this case, we're looking at the um, a scatter plot of, let's see, time spent studying and test grade on the y-axis. We're going to see if time spent studying can be used to predict um, this response uh, of the test grade. This is called the response, this is the predictor. So basically what we really do in the beginning of this chapter is we look at it and we say, what do we see? We look for three major things. We're looking for direction. We're here, you see the direction is kind of positive, which means as you spent more time studying, the grades tended to go, tend to go up. We look for whether the, the form, is it straight, is it curved? This looks fairly straight, fairly linear. <clears throat> then we look for uh, strength. Whether or not it's, these are all tight together, it would be really strong or scattered apart, it'd be, it would be more weak. So those are three things we're going to look for. And future, and later on, uh, we're going to do something called uh, linear regression. We're, go we're going to fit a line um, to this. And that line is going to be a model, and we're going to use that model to say some stuff and make some predictions. Um, so, and well, the other thing we also look for are outliers, like uh, these points. But let's just say, let's just talk about what the, what this actually means here, scatter plot, for those of you who haven't made one. Um, every, these po every point here has uh, two data, it's, they're all ordered pairs, and it has with it a time spent and a test grade, and this is what I mean. For instance, uh, this point right here, it looks like this person spent about 15 minutes studying, and they scored about a 60. And this person here, spent about 25 minutes studying and they scored about a 50. Should have studied a little bit more. Um, whereas this person who spent a couple people, a few people spent 40 minutes studying. Uh, this person right here spent 40 minutes studying and that person had an 80. Ooh, notice the more you spend studying, the higher your grade. Look at this for 50 minutes. I'm gonna add a new person. They spent an hour studying. I'm gonna put a couple more points in here. Because uh, I want you to know that, that that's really what happens when you study. You get better. Anyway, um, so that's what each of these points uh, has with it a time spent studying and a test grade. And what we're going to do like later, later on here is we're going to be, oh, say, oh, look at this. It looks like the trend goes like this. Well, that thing is the model. We're going to use that model to say, oh, someone who studies 30 minutes most likely would have got an 80. Someone who studies 40 minutes most likely had 100. And we're going to find an equation for this line. And the way we're going to find the equation of this line is the way we used to. We're going to say, what's the slope? Okay, well, the rise over the run. The rise here, let's see, 100 to 40 is uh, 60 points. Then about 10 minutes to about, let's say, 50 minutes, about 40 minutes. And the slope here is 60 points over 40 minutes. Which is about... 60 over 40 is about 1.5 points per minute. And that is a really important thing because it says for every one and a half, uh, for every, sorry, for every minute you studied, per, sorry, one minute, for every minute you study, your grade went up about 1.5 points. Isn't that cool? And let's see where the y-intercept is. It uh, looks like it's about a 60, 40, about a 50. So we can have an equation which says your grade equals about 1.5 times the number of minutes you spent plus the y-intercept, 50. Sorry, 30. What am I saying? So you can use this equation to predict anybody's grades based on the amount, any, but well, whatever, with some error. That's the long goal. But let's just talk about what we're doing here. That's just an intro to what we're going to see. But the big idea here to start off Chapter 7 is simply... Ah, that was a lot. Take a look at things and say, look at look for three things. Take a look at the scatter plot. Check the direction, the form, strength, and see if there's any outliers. Like there was one here. What do I mean by outlier here? Look at this guy. Spent about two minutes studying and got a hundred. Huh. Who's that? Those guys drive me crazy. And this other outlier, that's me. I spent 50 minutes studying. Got a 30. Anyway, let's see. Here we go, we got direction. Direction, just wondering if it's positive or negative. This guy's positive, this guy's negative. Just look at the flow, man, the flow. Form, is it straight, curvy, crazy? None, what would none be? None, that's none, there's nothing happening there. Not much of an association. 
Make sure you say association. Correlation is actually a numerical value determines the linearity of a relationship, how, how strong a relationship is. Anyway, we'll get to that later. Strength. Strength wants to know, is it strong or is it weak? It's strong when they're all, the pattern's very obvious. It's weak when there's a lot of scatter. So the more scattered it is, the weaker it is. And the tighter it is together, the stronger it is. So we say strong or weak, okay? Um, then we check for outliers, like that guy. You're out there. And the same rule applies for outliers as they did before. If it looks like an outlier, smells like an outlier, then it's probably an outlier. All right. And then we're going to end this off with um, just making scatter plots on our TI, just so you know how to do it. So what I want you to do is, if you can try right now, get your calculator out, do it with me. Or just watch me and try to remember it, but I'd rather you do it with me. Um, hit pause and enter this list into L1 and that into L2. And I guess I don't have to pause because if you pause, so I'm not going to pause. I already did it on my calculator, so I'm going to show you how to find the scatter plot. So I entered it. I'm going to show you here on my trusty TI emulator here online on the uh, computer. And I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to, oh, there's a box and whisker plot. That's not helping me at all. But let's go to, uh, why is that on a stat? Edit. And let's see. Oh, there's my data. 2034, 65, and there's my test grades. All right. Um, so I want to make sure that it's in L1. That's it, L2. Make sure you have the same amount of data values, because if you put an extra one in here, it will say error dim mismatch, which means you had mismatched dimensions. Okay, that'll say that once you try to make the scatter plot. So I want to make a scatter plot. Hmm, where would statistical plots be hidden? Oh, right there. And notice, oh, let me get back into focus here. Notice that that is yellow and so is the button yellow. You hit the yellow button to turn on the statistical plots and notice, good thing these are all off. If these were on, you'd have to scroll down and shut them all off, open them up, but they're already off and let's go into plot one. So I'm gonna hit enter and there we go, it's on. Ah, oh, that's why there's a box and whisker plot, because that says box and whisker plot. What kind of plot do I want? This guy right here. I want a scatter plot. So I'm going to move down, and I'm going to go over, over, and over. Wait a minute. No, that's not where I'm going. I'm going to go back, back to scatter plot, and I'm going to hit enter, enter, and now it's on. Look what it says, X list, Y list. What are they saying that for? Well, we're making a scatter plot. There's an X and a Y axis. What do I want on the X axis? What do I want on the Y axis? Generally, the response is going to go on Y, and what we're going to use to predict is going to go on X. So let's think back about the, the first thing we, we looked at here. Um, notice the X was time spent studying, and the Y was test grade. So we're going to put the time spent studying in X and test grade in Y. So it's always nice if you put your X in L1, grade in L2, the default is always L1, L2 pops up. So I already have my X and my Y. And then you can select your mark if you want to get fancy, if you want the marks to be like little pluses. Let's make them pluses. Yay. I want to be little pluses. Now I need to graph it. Well, I'll hit graph. Ready? Boom. Ooh, look at that. It just happened to pop back up. Now, sometimes it doesn't pop back up. It's somewhere else. There was another graph going on. And in that case, you want to zoom in on the statistics. So you hit zoom. And you go all the way down to stat which is nine, and hit enter, or you could just hit zoom in the number nine, see the number nine? Right, I'm gonna hit it, and it zooms right into the statistics. So that always works, okay? Now, what do I mean by the uh, error uh, dimension mis mis mismatch or whatever it is? Let's go back into stat, edit, and let's throw another number in there. Um, let's throw in uh, eight, someone got an eight, bad, bad day. Uh, and I try to go back to graph. I try to plot it up oh, Dimension oh man, it's a mismatch there quit So the thing is it's not you didn't give an X and a Y value. They're not all pairs. They're not all um, Lined up so you have to do that. Okay, so hopefully that clears things up bottom line of this chapter um, We're going to eventually make models and the model comes in two forms as a, a picture like a like a picture that the actual line itself is the model and then we're going to uh, make an equation that can also be a model and we're going to either look at this and say oh someone who spent 30 minutes probably gone out of this or we're going to actually take 30 plug it in here one and a half 30s is 45 45 plus 30 is 75 their grade should be about a 75 or use the equation the big things for your homework 
now um, is not that. It's this slide, this high-tech slide, is to talk about direction, form, strength, and outliers. So they're going to ask you to think about things. What's going to happen? Like, you know, someone eats a lot of McDonald's, their health is going to decline, right? More McDonald's, poor health, right? Someone who's really tall probably has really large feet, right? Basketball players, their feet are like size 20, right? They're very tall people, very tall people with large feet, okay? Different things will have different forms, so uh, that's just something to think about. That's the intro to Chapter 7. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you have any questions, email me. Uh, peace!